So before they even come to school, the parents have to do a health and safety uh, verification that they are coming to school. So they have signed off that they're going to do that. So when we have students arrive at school, we know that they're not coming to school sick. Um, then what they need to do is they do have designated areas to line up at and we're really fortunate at our school that we have so many entries and exits and so the students will enter and exit through their classroom door if they have one. So we do have at least half, I think we have about nine classroom doors that are outside so then they can enter through those doors and the other ones have designated entrances where they stand and wait. When they first get to school then we have supervisors that will come and let them in or classroom teachers so then they can begin the process of hand washing and each class has a designated area that they will wash their hands. It does take some time but that is very important that it's, it's okay that we're going to take time because health and safety is foremost in um, keeping our school open so we do want them to be spending that time washing their hands. Um, when they come in we have them immediately go to designated areas to wash their hands. So we have some staff letting them indoors, um, other staff in classrooms and areas where the sinks are so that the students can be supervised when they, they're going in. And then they go to their classes immediately. Um, right now we have no lockers being used. We have all of the students keeping their belongings with them. So most of the teachers have had them either put their backpacks on the backs of their chairs or in a designated area so their belongings, whether it's right under their desk, beside their desk, um, then their belongings are kept right there with them. We're trying to be careful when students use the bathroom. So we do have these markers right here. So when the students are going to go into the bathroom, we have a maximum of two students per bathroom. So the students would go and move the pylon with their foot, pick that up really fast. They put it in front so the next student who comes along can see that there is one student in the bathroom and that it's okay, they can go. So they can bring the second one across and then go into the bathroom. So we have a maximum of two students in the bathroom. When they're finished, they move the pylons back and then they go back to their classrooms. We have areas for them to line up so that they can be distanced from one another while they are waiting to use the bathroom. So we do have some lines on the floor right now for them to remember that they can't just be standing right beside each other. Um, we also have, for the bathroom use, teachers do have some scheduled times when they're bringing their classrooms down so that we're not just randomly sending students in the hallway. So as you can see, the hallways are very quiet. Um, there's not students milling about in the hallway. So there's just really a conscious effort of when we're leaving our classrooms and when we're going to another space. Students need to remember to stay on the right hand side. Um, so we have lines and we have arrows down the hallway so they remember to stay on the right hand side and that it's one way that they will wait. Um, they will walk on the right and that's the direction that they go. We also have directional arrows that help to show students which way they can go down the hallway. Classroom is an example. This classroom used to have all tables and she does a lot of group work where the table students sit around. So we've situated students where we've added some tables, um, added some desks, and the students are facing the same direction so we don't have that face-to-face -face contact. So during recess and lunch this year, we have staggered it to allow the groups to have more space on the playground. So we do have one recess at 10 o'clock, so the student, half of the school is out, or three of our learning groups are out at uh, 10 o'clock till 10.15. Then we have a five minute transition in between just to allow them to get in, any bathroom breaks that need to occur, um, if there are some areas for hand washing. And then at 10.20, we have the second recess, and so then we have four of our learning groups go outside. They have designated areas on the playground where they're playing. So if they're in the learning cohort, the understanding is that they just have to minimize their physical contact. Um, they can be a little bit closer because that's their learning cohort. And the other groups, ha they have those designated areas. They can talk with group students from other groups, but they have to maintain that two meter distance from students who are in other cohorts. And so we've staggered lunch as well too, so that we have more room, students can run and play and not have to constantly worry about being too close to someone who's not in their learning cohort. So where do the kids eat lunch? The students do eat lunches in their classrooms. So Right at their desk. Yeah, right at their desks. So they're in that same place. It's, it's their desks 
Um, their desks are washed every night. Um, so when they come back to school the next day, they are clean. The teachers also have um, some cleaning, some disinfecting solution if, if there's some disinfecting that needs to occur during the day as well. It's wonderful to have our students back. So it's been about six months since we had a full school. So Monday was our first day of full school and the excitement in the air amongst the students and staff is amazing. The students really truly are happy to be back. They were ready to come back and we're really happy to have them.